Stefania. Grandma Rosemary's voice echoed throughout the house in the country. Her granddaughter, a beautiful young woman with brown hair, rolled her eyes. Again her grandmother called her by her full name. What a stubborn old woman she is. The thing is, Stefania didn't like her full name. More to the point, she was simply ashamed of it, considering it didn't suit her in any way. After all, who was Stefania? Surely such a name should be for a noblewoman? A wealthy heiress to great parents, a beautiful model on the cover of a glossy magazine, a fashionable actress or a popular singer. But not a village girl who wore a braid up to her waist and could milk a goat named Rosie with one hand and a cow named Bella with the other. That's why Stefania asked everyone to call her simply. Stefa. Especially after she entered the institute as a medical student. Her classmates and new friends called her Stefa. Only her grandmother, Rosemary, kept standing her ground, and she often grumbled and complained. Your mother, may she rest easy, gave you such a beautiful name. And you're always complaining and complaining as if you were calling a dog into the yard. She sometimes said to her niece when she heard her introduce herself again to someone by the name of Stefa. But now the girl didn't want to argue with her grandmother. After all, that wasn't why she had come back from the dormitory, but to support her grandmother. Not long ago, their grandfather, named Patrick, had left for a better world. He was a good man. He played the accordion merrily, sang songs loudly, sometimes even using uncensored words brewed brandy boldly and just as energetically sipped it. Stefa adored her grandfather with all her heart. Grandma also loved her husband dearly. They lived, soul to soul, since their youth. So the loss for her was enormous. Even worse was the fact that, within a year, their already small family lost two loved ones at once. Grandpa died last spring. And six months ago, Stefa's older brother, her main protector and friend, Jack, was reported missing. He was a handsome young military man. Jack had been practicing self-defense since childhood, but also football. He wore his shoulder braces with honor and dignity. And then, suddenly, he disappeared. The police said he was still young, maybe he got bored with the service, so he'd have fun and come back. But only his relatives knew that Jack couldn't do that to his family. Time passed, but the police didn't seem to want to look for him. The sister appealed to volunteers, to search parties, searched for him herself, along with her brother's friends, but without success. That left only her and her grandmother. After all, they hadn't had parents for a long time. Her brother and sister had been raised by their grandparents since the age of twelve. That's why Stefa came to the village. This was her first New Year's Eve and Christmas, she spent just the two of them with her grandmother. So Stefania went down the rickety stairs from the attic, or loft. She and her brother, as children, had used the little corner under the roof as a bedroom, throwing blankets on the floor. They even gave it the name of their main residence. When they came to the village, the children often played at being spies, pirates, or robbers like Robin Hood. Before, of course, the attic was more comfortable. She and Jack were smaller, and now Stefa couldn't even straighten up because the roof was so low. But the girl liked to go up to the attic anyway, which smelled of wood and dust, and read books or listened to music looking through the only window. And today, when night had fallen over the courtyard and the big fluffy snowflakes were swirling in a dance, Stefa couldn't help herself and went upstairs. There she began to listen to her favorite songs, watching the stars and wondering where her brother was now. Would she ever see him again? Just then her grandmother called out to her. Stefania. The old woman repeated, without waiting for an answer. I'm coming, grandma. I'm coming. The girl answered putting the phone in her pocket. You're shouting so loud, soon the whole village will gather. She appeared in the kitchen, inhaling the warm air that smelled of buns. Help me, Grandma asked, nodding towards the oven. Take out the buns. Then make some tea and let's sit down for a drink. Stefa nodded in agreement and got to work. The country tea was particularly tasty. Could it have been the plants her grandmother carefully picked in the summer, dried and put in pre-signed jars? Or was it the atmosphere? In this impressive-looking table, covered with a tablecloth, with bright flowers that grandma embroidered with her hands? Or the conversations the old woman often made over tea? Or maybe all of them together? Either way, Stefa loved spending time with her grandmother in the kitchen. She treasured those moments. It was just a pity that neither her brother nor her grandfather were around. As soon as the tea was poured into the clay pots, from which fragrant steam rose, 
her grandmother, glancing at Stefa, clucked her tongue. You're looking in your phone again. Grandma, I'm just answering messages. To my friends, Stefania smiled, hiding the phone in her pocket, do you miss them? The old woman nodded understandingly, they're over there, the girls from the city, having fun, and you came to me. In the middle of nowhere. Drinking tea with an old woman. Oh, what a stubborn girl. I told you to stay in town. Did your parents leave you the apartment for nothing? Despite Grandma Rosemary's grumbling, it was obvious how glad the old woman was that she wasn't spending cold winter evenings alone. Stefa understood this perfectly, so she didn't feel offended at all, she didn't even raise an eyebrow, Grandma, don't talk nonsense, she puffed, picking a bun that was browner, what do I care about their fun? Are there such delicious buns and thyme tea? And that's right, the old woman flourished and moved a plate of pastries and a jar of jam closer to her granddaughter. You eat, eat, for you have lost weight. I should point out that Stefa, who had grown up on village butter and steamed milk, had never been thin. However, for her grandmother she remained a skinny milkmaid all her life. After admiring her granddaughter eating an appetizing loaf of jam, grandma propped her chin with her fist and looked out the window. Behind her it was dark. What weather. Real winter came on Christmas night, she sighed. Look at the ice flowers on the windows. What beauty. What's on the windows? The student woke up and stretched her neck to see the drawing she had never seen before. Grandma frowned and then corrected herself, ah, uh, yes, these are the snow drawings. I mean, the frost, she explained to her granddaughter. Oh, I see, said Stefa. She had gotten used to the fact that her grandmother could introduce strange words into conversation. Some of them Stefa remembered, but others she didn't. For example, she knew that to ponder meant to think, to fret meant to fret, and to learn meant to learn something. When Stefania finished her first year at the institute, her grandmother immediately jumped at her with questions, well, my dear, what did you manage to learn? Stefania was astonished and did not immediately understand why her grandmother was accusing her. Then, her grandmother, peeling herself away from the window, sneaked a glance at her granddaughter and asked. What, Stephanie? You're already twenty. Do you have a groom? Stephania choked on an unshed piece of sweet pastry. She quickly drank her tea and shook her head. What groom, grandma? We have studies. Here. She raised her hand above her head. We have a lot to learn. I'd like to make it to the last year of my studies, in my right mind. I can't even talk about dating. Grandma sighed sadly. She wanted great-grandchildren more than a granddaughter doctor. Even though the latter promised to cure her of every ailment, I was already married to Patrick when I was your age, the old woman grumbled, well, those were different times, her granddaughter shrugged. You said you even had suitors. It was like that, nodded the grandmother, then smiled nostalgically. It's a good thing I found my Patrick earlier, and it seems that on the same winter evening we met. Or rather, during the night. Really? The niece was delighted. Tell me about it. Stephanie felt ashamed that she didn't know the story of how her grandfather and grandmother met. She was used to thinking that they had only been together since they were young and that was all, listen, the old woman straightened up, that night, just as snowy, my friends and I decided to read the future. We didn't have telephones or televisions. So we had as much fun as we could. We made all kinds of riddles. We poured wax, burned paper, spun a ring over water but we didn't put a mirror in the bathroom, because it was scary. And here, one of the riddles was with a felt boot. You had to take the boot off your foot and throw it over the fence or onto the road, I know something like that. The great writer Joukowsky told about such a thing. She snapped her fingers and, beaming, said, once, on a christening evening, girls used to guess the future, they threw a slipper out of the gate, taking it off their feet. Grandma nodded, yes, yes, that's how we used to throw our felt boots. In general, you could find out the fate in different ways. One of them was this, which way the felt would fall, from there the fiancé would come into the house. Or we had to throw the felt on the road and sit and wait. The first man to pick it up, you had to ask his name. That's the name of the man you're going to marry. So what, yours was named Patrick? Asked Stefa impatiently. No, giggled the old woman, just like a little girl. Take it higher. I was the last of the girls to throw her felt boot over the fence. And at that moment a horse passed behind her, pulling a sleigh. The girls laughed, you lost your felt boot. But I wasn't shy. I ran barefoot through the snow to get to the sled. Stop. I shouted. Give it back. 
I hear the rider shouting to the horse, stop, my dear. He looks back at me, surprised, and there's a young man. I don't know him at all. So I said to him, you took my felt boot. He looks at my feet, sighs and jumps off the sled. He sits me on it, takes off his shoes and puts them on me. He took me back and I told him I guessed my fiancé's name. And he told me, my name is Patrick. I'm passing through your village. I guess I'm going to be your fiancé, since you're eyeing me with a felt. I laughed at the time, but in the end it happened. We were married shortly afterwards. And how could you not believe in fortune-telling after that? Stefania listened with pleasure to her grandmother. Not just because the old woman had a wonderful voice and a special way of putting accents. It was simply that the old woman's stories always made her believe in fairy tales, miracles and love. Why don't we guess today, Stefania? No need to get bored and look at the phone. I don't have felt boots. I'm not going to put the groom in a pair of winter tracksuits. But you guess differently. At least call him when you go to bed. Put a comb under your pillow and then say, My fiancé, come to me, comb my hair, Grandma advised her. Well, maybe I will, the girl yawned, but then smiled. Can I call him to write my paper? Grandma only laughed, shaking her head. They talked some more about guessing, Grandma knew a lot of funny and even scary stories. Then the old lady went to bed and fell asleep as soon as her head hit the pillow. When her granddaughter was at home, Rosemary fell asleep very quickly and with a deep and peaceful sleep. Steffa washed and put away the dishes and covered the buns with a towel. Only then did she return to her room. Before going to bed, she put on her pajamas, unbraided her braids and brushed her hair. The girl took a long look at her comb. Skepticism and curiosity were fighting inside her. Well, Steffa agreed with herself. My fiancé. Come to me, comb me. After these words, the embarrassed girl tucked her hairbrush under her pillow. She was about to turn off the light and go to bed when she heard a knock. At first he thought he was imagining the sound. Or that it was the wind playing and blowing in the window. But then, bang, 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 clearer, more insistent. Stefa turned suddenly, looked out of the window and, terrified, stepped back. A face stared at her from behind the window. Fiancé, get out of here. Whispered the girl. She was terribly frightened and didn't know what to do. Should she cross herself and recite the Lord's Prayer or look for her grandfather's shotgun? But her grandfather had said that Steffa would grow up to be a beauty, that she would shoot the suitors. I think it's time. Help me, please. Don't be afraid. Stefania heard a voice that sounded young and, sincerely eager for help. She licked her dry lips. Her heart was pounding to the rhythms of rumba, samba and all the other fast dances, I. I need help, the stranger repeated, looking hopefully at the girl. Then he listened, looking over his shoulder as if he were afraid of something. I have a gun and pepper spray, warned Stefania to the stranger, just in case. The man, who had been pale and uneasy before, suddenly smiled pleasantly. His gaze became warm, I could use it, to be honest. I'm being followed. Please. The light was only on in your window. I have nowhere to go, no power. Steffa felt as if she was between two fires. She was afraid to help the stranger, who could be a dangerous man. Yet she couldn't even walk away from him and live peacefully any longer, knowing that she had left him overnight, in the cold, begging for help. And then she remembered the words of her late grandfather Patrick. He had said to her, if anyone asks for your help, offer him your hand. It won't cost you anything. My grandfather, indeed, always tried to help everyone. Maybe because of Stefania he wanted to become a doctor, to help people. And now she, the future doctor, looked at the man and didn't open the window. No, that wasn't going to happen. Stefania walked resolutely to the window, turned the handle and pulled the frame towards her. It was covered with snow and ice, so it didn't give way immediately. Why the man didn't come through the door, she didn't wonder. And the girl herself was too confused to offer him a more mundane way into the house. One more bit. Stefania exhaled when the window was opened. Cold air rushed in, stinging snowflakes assailing the pajama-clad girl. She squeezed her eyes shut for a moment, but then suddenly opened them and held out her hand to the stranger. Let me help you, she said confidently. He looked gratefully at the mistress of the house and took her hand. Stefan noticed that the man wrinkled his nose and grabbed his side as he slumped over the window sill and sighed, Oh. Thank you, he murmured, staying on the floor and trying to catch his breath thank you. The young man was obviously cold,
because he wasn't dressed for the weather, in a strange dark suit, like a special worker's uniform. The clothes were dark, unmarked, and baggy. He wore neither a tool nor a jacket. The stranger was unshaven, and his eyes were puffy, with broken capillaries. He looked like he hadn't slept since last year, and it was already January 8th. But that didn't frighten Stefania, my god. You're hurt. She was terrified, throwing herself on her knees next to the unexpected guest. Let's see. You mustn't, he stammered, trying to get away from the girl. I'm a doctor. She said sternly. Well, almost. I'll be a doctor soon. How soon? Are you sure? The man squinted with suspicion and disbelief. Stefania wrinkled her nose with displeasure. Oh, what an allure. I dragged him into the house and he's showing off. Does he want the best doctor in the village or what? If you don't show me the wound, you might get an infection and you'll never know the answer to the question of whether I'll be a doctor or not, she said sternly and removed the man's fingers from the wound. She hissed at the girl, tending to the injured man. She laid him on her bed, ignoring the wet clothes. Stefania brought a first aid kit, her grandmother was adept at buying all the medicine she saw. She expertly treated and stitched the man's wound. He endured the pain of the stitches, gritted his teeth and turned his back to the wall. She didn't ask him where he got the wound. She was afraid the answer would frighten her. It looked like a stab wound, but the internal organs were intact. There, now you will surely live to see my graduation, she said, pleased with herself. If you don't find other adventures on your head. The man turned to her, looked her in the face and smiled. Are you inviting me? To the prom, he asked suddenly. Stefania opened her mouth, stunned. Her cheeks flushed red. It was only then that she got a good look at the man. He was very young. Her brother's age, no less. She wanted to answer, but felt embarrassed and uttered. Who are you hiding from? The girl couldn't pass to per two, although the stranger had done so long ago. The man shuddered, from bad people. I'm sorry I fell on you like a snowball. I had nowhere else to go. I was exhausted, to be honest. I thought I'd fall asleep in the snow and that would be the end of my journey. I'm ashamed to admit it, but I was almost glad. I was tired as a dog. And then I saw. There was darkness all around, then a light shone. In your window. It was like I had a second wind. Like a moth to a flame I flew. I knew in my heart I'd be helped. And I didn't fail. Then the stranger looked straight into the eyes of Stefania, who had frozen from his speech, believe me, I won't hurt you. I swear. Not a single bad thought. Stefania nodded, believing his words. She began to gather bandages and ointments. Are you hungry? The girl asked, afraid to look at the man again. He was having a bad effect on her heartbeat, she was going to have a heart attack. I can feed you and make you some hot tea, thank you, smiled the stranger, then added, what's your name? S-T-E. Stefania, the girl muttered, blushing even more. And why had she said her full name? Silly girl. She wanted to present herself to the man in a different way, not like this. The man smiled, sleepy and tired, Stefania, he whispered, as if tasting the name it's beautiful. And it's familiar, but what's your name? She turned over her shoulder, but immediately shivered, realizing that he had fallen asleep. The girl smiled, covered the guest with a blanket and closed the door slowly. In the morning, when the guest awoke, he finally introduced himself as Jason and apologized for occupying the bed. Steffa waved her hand, you know, for me it is really useful to be on duty at the bedside of a sick person, she smiled. The girl didn't let her go right away. She wanted to check the wound and feed the traveler. But she told him to hide in the attic, Grandma must not see you. You spent the night in my room, so according to the laws of the village, you must marry me, the girl joked. Will there be any drawbacks, replied Jason flirtatiously, making Stefania's cheeks flush again. After escorting the guest upstairs, the girl went to the kitchen. Soon, her grandmother stood up, surprised that her granddaughter had woken up before the roosters, I'm getting hungry. Stefania muttered, hiding her old woman look. She couldn't lie to her grandmother. As soon as the girl had prepared her breakfast and was about to take it upstairs, another knock was heard. This time, someone was pounding on the front door. Firmly, insistently. Grandma was surprised, she looked at her granddaughter, who's there this morning? Gregory must have had too much to drink again and messed up the houses. Or is Linda looking for him alone in the houses? The old woman grumbled and crawled to the door. 
Leaving the cake and buns, Stefania ran after the old woman, scared of visitors. She was right. In front of the door stood two men in police uniforms. Hello, ladies, smiled one of them. Well, if you think it's good, Grandma, who didn't like policemen very much, frowned. What do you want? It's too early. The case is urgent. We're looking for a criminal on hot tracks. During the transport, a prisoner escaped from the convoy. Holy Father. The old woman crossed herself in fear with an orthodox cross. What's going on? Yes, yes, the man shook his head. He's a very dangerous criminal. Maybe you've seen him? The man pulled out a photo from a file, from which Grandma and Stefa were looking. Jason, it was him. The photo was black and white, but it was impossible not to recognize the man. The girl let out a frightened sigh. The policeman flinched, looked at her with a sharp, watchful eye. The girl didn't like that look. What's going on? Does the face look familiar? A man asked quickly. I'm sorry. No, no, no. I just got scared. But a criminal escaped. She muttered, then asked, but what did he do? It's secret, roared the second man, who had been silent until then. Tell me, is it very dangerous? Because my grandmother and I only live together. We'll be afraid to sleep at night from now on, Stefa diligently played the role of the silly girl in the alley. She didn't understand at all why she was covering for Jason. Wasn't it because the look in his green eyes was a hundred times kinder and gentler than the faces of those policemen? Especially the second silent and somber man. He looked a lot more like a gangster from the years than Jason. Except he was missing a leather jacket. I've never seen anything like it. And we haven't even been out of the house the last few days. All the roads are covered with snow, the old woman related, looking earnestly at the guests. Really? We saw footsteps near your house, we think he stepped on it, the policeman insisted. Stefania turned even paler. Then she turned green, and then she chose a noble shade of red for her face. The silent officer of the law looked her straight in the eye without blinking. The girl felt uncomfortable and was very, very afraid that Jason would make a sound. But there was no sound from the attic. I went out at night, the girl exhaled. I guessed the future. I threw my boot over the fence. Oh, you guessed. The old woman rejoiced, forgetting the prisoner as soon as she smelled a wedding and great-grandchildren. And how, from which side will the groom come? And the comb under your pillow? The policemen looked at each other. Obviously they didn't want to listen to such gossip. Well, mumbled the man, hiding the photo. If you find out anything, let us know. Here's my phone number. Grandma took the card, nodding. Stefania frowned, but can't we call the police directly? She asked, waving her hand. You know, there's only one number and all that. The man gave an unpleasant smile. We're dealing with this case personally, understand? It's our responsibility and, as you said, all sorts of things. Well, good day, sorry to have bothered you. He nodded, wanting to leave. However, his colleague didn't let the old woman close the door. He suddenly put his hand forward, making Stefa flinch. The man looked her frowning in the eye and said, just so you know. Hiding a fugitive is a crime. Such an act attracts criminal liability, which can take the form of a fine and even a prison sentence. Therefore, if you harbor a fugitive without informing the police, you can suffer. Stefa's heart fluttered, but her voice sounded firm. Thank you, I'll know. I hope I won't need such information. You will catch him, won't you? She looked into the man's eyes naively, without guile. The man frowned, nodded, then followed his colleague outside. Then Stefania and her grandmother had breakfast, only afterwards the girl managed to reach the attic. Neither dead nor alive, she brought food to her fugitive. Jason almost fell at her feet, I heard everything. I was sure you'd give me away. Why did you lie? Why did you believe me and not them? He asked, grabbing Stefa by the arm instead of eating. She shrugged. She didn't try to pull out her hand my heart told me so, she murmured reluctantly. Go on, eat them. You can't stay here too long. Well, I. But I'm afraid for my grandmother. Jason stood for a while, looking at Stefania's embarrassed profile, then nodded and started eating. Devouring the goodies with a ravenous appetite, the man confessed to his rescuer, they told half the truth. They wanted to lock me up, actually, but I escaped. But they're trying to lock me up because, together with my friend, I witnessed a murder. There are very authoritative people involved. 
It's a miracle they didn't just lock us up. They were afraid that we would hide the evidence and that someone else would find it if we didn't hand it over, and you hid it? Stefania exclaimed in astonishment. The man, after a moment's hesitation, nodded, yes, there is such a thing. We thought we were going to help, but now who's going to help us? My friend and I were caught then, what do you mean, caught? We didn't even think of hiding then. Who would have thought it would be like this? They took us to different remand centers, tried to get testimony out of us. They said we had to confess that we were the ones who killed that man. They also tried to find out where we put the evidence. I kept quiet. My friend. He's stronger than me, he'd never give too much away. They tried to trick me, told me that Anderson, my friend, gave everything. I didn't believe it, and they gritted their teeth in spite of themselves. And now they tried to move me to a colony without a trial. There, I hear, they'll kill me eventually. So I ran when I had the chance. What are you going to do now? Steph sighed. Run away all my life? No, nodded Jason confidently, I have to find my friend. He saved my life once. I owe him. I heard where they're taking him. I'll find him. I swear to God I will. The man's words sounded strange to Stefan, as if he had escaped from an action movie and found himself in her attic. For a moment, the girl even imagined how her brother would be standing here instead of Jason. And he'd make up stories like he was a child. As if they were hiding from bandits, hiding evidence, healing each other's wounds. The thought of her brother saddened Stefa. She only hoped that if Jack was in trouble somewhere, someone would help him. Even if it was a winter night. Stefania re-examined the wound, changed the bandage. She talked to the man, but he listened to her more and more, talking less and less about himself. As if he was afraid of saying too much and making the girl sink further into his suffering. He left two nights later, when he gained strength. And when Stefa made sure their home wasn't being watched by that sinister man who was barely a real cop, Stefania went back to the city to study. Time passed, thoughts of her brother, and also of Jason, often ran through her head. She worried about them both, hoped everything would be all right. After the summer exams, Stefania came back to her grandmother. The old woman was glad to see her. Bring some fresh berries from the garden, she told her at breakfast. I want to put them in porridge. Stefa ran obediently to the vegetable garden. As she walked back with two handfuls of berries in her apron, a car pulled up in front of the gate. Stefania looked at her and the man who got out of the car. And then, Jack, she exclaimed softly, as if afraid of frightening her vision with an unnecessary sound. She lowered her apron and the grains scattered on the path. Jack! She shouted louder. Jack! Grandma! Grandma! Jack! Her eyes filled with tears. She shook them away as she rushed into her smiling brother's arms. To keep her from looking at his face. Jack, you're alive, she cried, throwing herself around her older brother's neck, pinching his cheeks to make sure he was alive, then kissing him. Grandma shuddered too. She grabbed her heart, growled, threw the towel next to the crushed berries, my grandson. My darling. My darling. Cried the old woman, hugging Jason. What happiness. Where have you been, you rascal? Jack laughed, hugging his sister and grandmother tightly, squeezing them to him. He tried to explain something, to tell them, but it didn't go well. From happiness, as from a heady wine, his tongue stumbled. And then the car door slammed again. Stefania took her eyes from her brother, but then froze, stunned again, Jason, she gasped. There indeed stood Jason. He was no longer tired, no longer bearded, no longer in his prison uniform. He was steady and handsome. Hello, Stefania, he smiled, then nodded to Jack. Here, as promised. I found my boyfriend. Well, I'm here to see if you're going to be a doctor. Stefania put her hands to her mouth, terrified. So that's who Jason had told her about. About her own brother. The girl was even afraid to imagine what might have happened if she hadn't opened the window. Would she now embrace Jack or bury him? When the emotion subsided, the whole company sat down at the kitchen table. Grandma Rosemary was setting out plates full of goodies, but she was still trying to hug her grandson. When we were on duty, we were at the wrong time, in the wrong place, Jack said, a man was sent to the other side. He was the son of an important person in the Ministry of Defense. He was drunk and under the influence of I don't know what else. And all this was captured by Jason's camera phone. The killer did the deed, dropped the gun. We took it and hid it. 
we figured there'd be an investigation. We came to the commander, and as it turned out, he wasn't on our side. He let us go in peace, swearing he'd sort it out. And he did. They came to our souls in the morning, decided to pin the whole thing on me and Jason. It was like a movie. It seemed like everyone around us was bought, no one could be trusted. But Jason got away, then managed to get me out too. They should dedicate a song to him for his exploit, honestly, there's nothing to dedicate, Jason embarrassed himself. They kept Jack in a small, very isolated prison, because they were afraid he would show himself to people and make a scandal. I put on my uniform as soon as I passed by. I took him in for questioning and left. In fact, I'm really ashamed of them. They made such a ridiculous mistake. The young men recalled at length the moments of their adventures, their escape and then how they managed to prove their innocence. They weren't criminals, they were heroes. Why didn't you return immediately? Stefania scolded her brother, I was afraid that if something went wrong, they would come to you and grandma, Jack admitted honestly, then looked at his friend, I didn't know that you had already managed to become an accomplice. You harbored a murderer, Stefa. How could you do that? Did he seduce you with his puppy dog eyes? He can do that. Stefania blushed, Jason blushed. Grandma looked puzzled at one grandchild and another. And Jack just giggled, eating pies. And yes, this story ended well. And then another, already romantic, began. Stefania actually opened the window to her fiancé. Jason and Stefa got married three years later. Jack was happy for his best friend and his sister. Grandma Rosemary danced like a little girl at their wedding, happy to finally see her great-grandchildren. And she's sure to tell them a funny story about their parents. About how their mother decided to guess one winter night, and there were beautiful drawings of the terrible frost on the window. Here's a story you've heard today, my dears. And if you like the story, please support me with a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on new stories. Have a wonderful evening to you all and a peaceful night. We'll talk again soon. Bye.